prophet speaks of the Jews, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five horses. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks, all blind, lame, and lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the wall. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Next question will be Wade in the water with Sister Kalai and Sister Abigail.
that in is the reading of three flash scriptures and the two songs from the sounds and voices of NBCI. And now we're just going to come to the today and give us a day's class. Yes, he's here. You may need to knock on him. <clears throat> well, Up here. Are you closed up? I'd like to extend the peace of the God of Israel to each and every one of you. Jesus. Welcome you once again to another holy convention that Yahweh Elohim, through the Messiah, Yahshua, has seen fit to sit here in Atlanta. And the reason why he did these things is so that he can have one of a city, two of a town, mm -hmm. so that he can form his majestic white horse that he's going to ride in the battle. Because truly, Yehuda, you, Judah, are the ones that's going to take this kingdom back. Amen. It was taken from us, and it's only right that we take this kingdom back. And what we've been doing so far in our classes is leading up to how this kingdom was taken and why this kingdom was taken and going on into the setup of the kingdoms of the earth uh, 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 and how we're going to be uh, treated during this uh, during this period of this 400 year captivity and what's going to happen to the nations once the messiah returns uh, uh, 
uh, on the scene. So I always try uh, to find the time to give thanks to the God of Israel that he sees fit, that we know these things, because many people don't know what's going on. I talked with a brother this morning that called me from Texas. And he was in a Bible class, and uh, yeah. And anyways, uh, the brother keep calling simply because he knows that what he's getting from those brothers is, is, is partial truths. But in NCCI, what we try to do is we try to cover all the bases to make sure that you get all of the truth so you can make up your own minds whether you want to serve the true and living God and whether or not you want to enter into that kingdom that is soon to be uh, set up here on this earth. But Brother Steve, read the of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read that we might be saved. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received a gift, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua, the anointed one, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Be you, therefore, followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving effect. <coughs> Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and hold a convention. The last week, we ended up with uh, the colonization of the ten tribes over Europe, Asia, and the, uh, in the Far East by Shalmaneser. Yahweh was in the process of tearing down the house. First, he divided the house between Samaria and Judea. And then, he came and took Samaria out of the land, as he had said that he would, he would do, he's in the process of destroying our fathers totally, so that the remembrance of them would cease from among men. And what we're going to do today is we're going to pick this up in 2 Kings uh, 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 chapter 18 and verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. Second Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Oshia, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Yehudah, began to reign. Twenty-five years old was he when he began to reign, 
and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that thy weed, his father, did. Amen. He removed the high places and broke the images and cut down the groves and broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moshe had made. For until those days, the children of Israel did burn incense to him, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in Yahweh Elohim of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Yehuda, nor any that were before him. For he claimed to Yahweh, and departed not from him, from following him, but kept Yahweh's commandments, which Yahweh commanded Moshe. And Yahweh was with him, and he prospered wherever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza and its borders, from the tower of the watchman to the fortified city. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Oshia, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of three years, they took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is, the ninth year of Oshia, king of Israel, Samaria, was taken. Mm -hmm. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria, and put them in Hala and Pabor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Russians, because they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh their Elohim, but transgressed his covenant, and all that Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, commanded, and would not hear them, nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Yehuda and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, sent to the mess sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, "I have offended. Withdraw from me. That which you put upon me will I bear." Hmm. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Yahweh and in the treasures of the king's house. Now, a talent of silver was worth $1,980. Okay? And a talent of gold, well, $1,940 rather, and a talent of gold was worth $29,800. So it was a heavy tribute that he put on the day of Moscow. Go Yes, sir. Verse 16. At that time did Hezekiah strip the gold from the doors of the temple of Yahweh and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent the Tartan and the Rapsaris and the Rapshaka from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem and when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. Mm -hmm. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, who was over the household, and Shepna, the scribe, and Yoah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. Mm -hmm. And the rock shaker said unto them, Speak you now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this in which you trust? Mm -hmm. You say, but they are but vain words, I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Now behold, you trust upon the staff of this bruised reed, this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all who trust in him. Mm -hmm. But if you say unto me, we trust in Yahweh our Elohim, it's not that he who high places and whose altars Hezekiah have taken away and have said to Yehuda and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver you two thousand horses, 
if you be able on your part to set riders upon them. How then will you turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust on Egypt for chariots and for horses? <laughs> Am I now come up without Yahweh against this place to destroy it? Yahweh said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Mm -hmm. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, and Shephna, and Yoah, unto the Rapshakeh, pray, I speak, I speak, I pray you, to your servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. Right, because the common people don't know this, 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 that this thing that what you're going through here. They don't know that, uh, uh, they don't seem to understand, they may not understand that you're saying all these things to take all of the, the pride and the fight out of them, see? But you, you talk to us in your tongue, because we ain't going to go for your tongue. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 27. Bacharach Shaker said unto them, have my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words? Have he not sent me to the men who sit on the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then the rock shaker stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews language and spoke, said, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you but he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, but thus says the king of Assyria, make an agreement, agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat you every man of his own vine, and every one of his own fig tree, and drink you every one the waters of his system, until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and of honey, that you may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he misleadeth you, saying, Yahweh will deliver. This was a habit of the kings of the earth at that time. What they would do when they captured somebody's land, they would take the people out of that land and put them in somebody else's land that they had captured and bring those people and put them in that land. In other words, now you don't have no land. Now you don't have anything to fight for. Now you're service to the king. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Also, it caused confusion as to the identity. Of them, not, uh... Eventually, it did. Mm -hmm. People moved around so much they got to be called all kind of names. At one time, Israel was called Nubians. Mm -hmm. See, they were called Ashanti. Mm -hmm. You see, simply because of where they had been placed. Mm -hmm. and then uh, they had already gave them the name Falasha. Then they brought them over here and called them blacks, niggers, possums, coons, alligators, and everything else. No wonder we can't find our uh, identity. Because we got to look at the possums, the coons, and everything else. Go all the way back up through there and try to park back all those curtains. Go ahead and read. Verse 34. Verse 33, I'm sorry. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He didn't deliver Yahweh yet. I mean, he had dealt with gods that were no gods. Gods that people had made with their own hands, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 34. Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpan? Where are the gods of Sepharpham and Hena and Ivar? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries who have delivered their country out of mine hand that Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Mm -hmm. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, answer him not. Mm -hmm. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, who was over the household, and Shephna the scribe, and Yoah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of the rap shaker. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered him with sackcloth, and went into the house of Yahweh. Mm. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shaphna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Esau, the prophet, the son of Amos. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and a rebuke, and a blasphemy, 
For the children have come to the birth, and there's not strength to bring forth. It may be Yahweh, your Elohim, will hear all the words of the Rakshaka, whom the king of Assyria, his master, have sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh, your Elohim, have heard. Wherefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant who are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1. <coughs> my brother when you uh, uh, in reading this when you ask where the, the gods of those all of those other lands you know where they were set up at in Samaria hmm. they were set up right there in our own land among the ten tribes uh, Ezekiel 36 and uh, Isaiah 36. I'm sorry uh, Isaiah 36 and verse 1 see a lot of people th this is what uh, the, uh, on the program uh, 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 this week a brother called in and he was talking about that you know some people call him this, and some people call him that, and some people call him this. But, you know, as long as I worship him with my heart and everything, then I'm worshiping God. No, you ain't. <laughs> Yahweh said, my people shall know my name. He said, I'm going to magnify my holy name that you polluted among the evil wherever you meant, went, right? The average person that you ask what is God's name. When you say, what is the name of I Elohim? They never know. They never know. People say, well, you know, God's name is uh, Jehovah. Uh, and you say, uh, you say, you talking about Yahweh? Oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. So I didn't ask you what his name is. I asked you what was the God of Israel's name. Mm. Mm. Ezekiel 36. Pick that up. Isaiah 36. Isaiah. I don't know why I want to go to Ezekiel. Let's talk about Esau. I don't want to talk about Esau. Uh, uh, Isaiah 36. And pick that up the verse. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Shennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defense cities of Yehuda and took them. And the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh from the keys to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Elijah, Hezekiah's son, who was over the house, and Shephna the scribe, and Yoah, Asaph's son, the recorder. Now, I'd read, I, I read that first part to let you know that we're still dealing with the same thing we was dealing with before, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now skip over to our chapter 37, my brother, and pick that up. Mm -hmm. Chapter 37. Asaph's chapter 37, verse 1. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahweh. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shabna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth unto Esaias the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and a rebuke and a blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be, Yahweh, your Elohim, will hear the words of the Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, have sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh, your Elohim, have heard. Right. King went into the Lord's house and did just what he was supposed to do with somebody when you got a rebuke like that, you see. Mm -hmm. He had blasphemed, right? Mm -hmm. He went into the Lord's house and laid that letter down to describe it, wrote, and look what, look what that man said going to do to you. Mm -hmm. see? This man don't care nothing about you. Right. See? He say he gonna come in your house and he gonna do this and he gonna do all that. What you gonna do? Alright. Huh? So he sent to Isaiah the prophet said, let's send to Isaiah and let's find out what he gonna do about this thing here. So they went to Isaiah, go ahead and read and see what happened. Last part of verse 4. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. 
Verse 5. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say unto your master, Thus says Yahweh, Be not afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Right, so don't you be saying, Now, nah, what he was talking about you was one thing. <laughs> but don't you be afraid of his words which you have blasphemed me with. Now. See, I'm going to take care of my own business. Wait a minute, Verse 7. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Mm -hmm. So the Rapshaker returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish, and he heard say concerning Taharqa, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with you. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, saying, Let not your God, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nation delivered them that my fathers have destroyed as Gozan and Haran and Reseph and the children of Edom who were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad and the king of the city of, the city of Sepharve and Kenna and Abba? And Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messenger, and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of Yahweh and spread it before Yahweh. And Hezekiah prayed unto Yahweh, saying, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Yisrael, who dwelleth between the cherubim, you are the God, even you alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Amen. Incline your ear, O Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, O Yahweh, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib who have sent to reproach the living Elohim. Of a truth, Yahweh, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stones. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Yahweh, our Elohim, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahweh, even you only. Amen. Then he says, the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Whereas you have prayed to me against the Nazareth, king of Assyria, this is the word which Yahweh have spoke concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Yehuda, have despised you and laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem have shaken her head. The daughter of Jerusalem ain't thinking about that junk you talk about. Judah's going to be saved. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? And against whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. By your servants have you reproached the Adonai and have said, By the multitude of my chariots am I come up to the height of the mountain, to the size of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And I will cut down the tall cedars thereof and the choice fir trees thereof. And I will enter into the height of its border and the forest of its carmel. Now we had another king that came up that said, uh, uh, he made orientation to the people, made orientation to the people and everything, and uh, exalted himself, right? And the worm smote and he died. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar came out to my, isn't this great Babylon which I have built? Mm -hmm. Not understanding that Yahweh had brought him into, into that, right? Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord said, Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom has passed from you. Mm -hmm. And they drove him out in the wood and he stayed out there seven years and they grass like an oxen did. Mm -hmm. Then he messed around and looked up and realized who it was uh, 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 that had put him in that position. Then Yahweh gave his power and everything back. That was what that, well, we get to that later. Go ahead and read. Verse 25. I have deed and drunk water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Have you not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass 
that you should be laid to waste defense cities and to ruin the cities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were like the grass of the field and like the green herb, like the grass on the housetops and like corn blighted before it is grown up. But I know your abode and you're going out and you're coming in and your rage against me. Right, the country, they want nothing. See, they want nothing. But see, I know where you live. Mm -hmm. I know how you come in and how you go out because I set up and I tear down mm -hmm. kingdoms on the earth, right? And I, my word is going out of my mouth and whatever's going out, that's what's going to stay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 29. See, that's why when you talk to them Christians, you ask them, say, well, show me in the book where you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Show me where the words went out of Yahweh's mouth. Oh, well, see right here, say, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. See, it didn't say you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. See, say it right here, we're blessed in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. It didn't say you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in paradise with him. When he... <laughs> that's what he told them two men was on the cross, right? He said, today, mm -hmm. you shall be with me in paradise, <coughs> right? right? What was that paradise? The grave. Mm -hmm. Then also the Messiah. They didn't have no worry right. or no nothing else, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But rather the Messiah who they love and know so much, he say no man has ascended up to heaven, but he did come down from heaven, right? He said no man goes to heaven except him who came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, check this out, who is in heaven, right? Right. The brother was on the earth when he said that. Mm -hmm. Rattle that around. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 26. I'm sorry. Verse 29. Because your rage against me and thou tumult are come up into my ears, therefore will I put my hook in your nose mm -hmm. and my bridle in your lips, yes, yes. and I will turn you back by the way by which you came. Mm -hmm. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, <coughs> and the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Mm -hmm. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Yehudah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Amen. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. Right, he got all these men, he done brought all across the earth, right? And captured all these lands and everything. Got all this war machine out there. He always said he ain't gonna shoot arrows this place. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna even flash his shield at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Approach the true and living God. That don't that don't work. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it, brother. <laughs> Verse 34. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, says Yahweh. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for thy we and for my servant thy we sake. Verse 36. Then the angel of Yahweh went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when men arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Mm -hmm. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adramelech and Shereza, his son, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ariat, and he saw Hadon, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to talk no more with him. Mm -hmm. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And he says, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says Yahweh, set your house in order, but you shall die and not live. Hmm. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto Yahweh and said, Remember now, O Yahweh, I beseech you, how, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of Yahweh to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Dawid, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, 
Behold, I will add to your days 15 years. Behold, I'm going to add to your days 15 years. Now, they already told him to get your house in order, boy, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Yahweh told him to say, you're going to die, but I'm going to add to your year, to your days 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself a question. Since you come under the blood, how many days do you believe that Yahweh has added to your year? Mm -hmm. Don't read, bro. Verse 6. And I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto you from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. Hmm. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Hmm. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, when he had been sick and was, the, was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I, will, I shall go to the gates of <coughs> the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said I shall not see Yahweh, even Yahweh in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness. From day even to night will you make an end of me. I reckon to morning that like a lion, so shall he break all my bones. From day even to night will you make an end of me. Hmm. Like a crane, all swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn like a dove. Mine eyes fell with looking downward. Oh, Yahweh. Look upward, I'm sorry. Oh, Yahweh, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. Hmm. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me and himself have done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Hmm. Oh, Adonai, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So will you restore me and make me to live. Right. If you do what? If you go softly all the years in the bitterness of your soul. But see, what we like to do is this. We will pray to Yahweh for certain things. And Yahweh, we walk just as soft. Right? We walk just as soft and so forth. Then when Yahweh give us these things, we get comfortable in these things. And we forget the words that proceeded out of our mouth. And what do you think the end of that is going to be? See, this is what we have to learn how to do. Once we come under that blood, we have to forget that old man and leave that old man laying in the grave. What I want and what I desire has nothing to do with what Yahweh wants for me and what his desire is for me. So what a man has to do is this. He has to learn to walk softly and follow the ways of the Spirit, you see. And once he do that, then he'll know how to walk humbly and justly before his God towards salvation. But if a man doesn't do this, man or woman, if they don't do this, if they don't humble themselves under the power of the Almighty God, then truly, how can they uh, uh, keep from being visited by God? Amen. Go ahead and leave. Amen. Yes, sir. See, and we look around and we say things happen. Look, things. Yes, sir. You lose this. That over there breaks. This over here happens. You have to stand back and ask yourself, now why did this stuff be happening? Yahweh give it and he take it away, right? Well, why is he taking it away in my youth? Why is he doing these things to me? Then if you go and look in your closet, truly look in your closet, instead of looking on the top shelf, just look all in the closet. If you do that, guess what? You're going to find what, what, what the reason is. But see, we won't look in our, we won't, we won't search our hearts and our spirits the way that we should do. You know why? We got that little thing that we want to hold on to. And that little thing seem insignificant to you that we want to hold on to to get you cut off. Get you cut. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 17. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. But you have in love to my soul, delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. <coughs> for the grave cannot praise you, death cannot celebrate you. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living, he shall praise you, as I do this day. 
The father to the children shall make known your truth. Yahweh was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of Yahweh. Amen. For he says, has said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster <coughs> upon the ball, and he shall recover. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah also has said, what is the sign that I shall go up to the house of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. At that time, Merodach Baladon, the son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah. For he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that were found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Right. You know, brothers like to do, yeah, I got this. Come on in, I got this thing over here, and I got this thing. Why don't you come on down in the den here so he can show you everything he got, you know, how Satan is blessed him. And he, he going to church every day, paying tithes in one of them whorehouses, and, and trying to tell you that your God is blessing him. You see what I mean? He go and show you all the things that, is, that, that, that his God has given, right? This is what this guy did, right? Okay? Show both. Right? Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 3. Then came himself, the prophet, unto King Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from where came they unto you? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then said Hezekiah, then said he says to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahweh of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says Yahweh. And of your sons that shall issue from you, whom you shall beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to himself, Good is the word of Yahweh which you have spoken. He said, Moreover, but there shall be peace and truth in my day. Right, he said, I don't care nothing about that. Uh -huh. Good, he didn't smoke good. It ain't gonna happen to me. It ain't gonna happen in my day. So he smoke good, you know. Bye. You know, 2 Kings 20. And pick that up in verse 20. Brother, it shows that the king may have had sovereign authority, but then there's a board of directors <laughs> and a higher authority. So when the king saw the prophet coming, all of his uh, authority and power it had to take a back seat because the prophet was coming from the true authority source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his brother did all that good for all those years to just let this one act. That is so incredible. It just shows that though, you can do good all your life and then at the end do bad and then all that will be forgotten. But yet you can be horrible all your life and turn to do good and then be saved. So it's truly waiting to the end. When a righteous man sins, none of the things that he does is going to be mentioned to him. Exactly. When a wicked man turns from his ways, then the angels of heaven enjoy it. But the righteous, those that, that have, have rejoiced in righteousness, they go on and they go on and they go on and it, it comes to a place where the last, the first is going to be last mm -hmm. and the last, last is going to be first. first. That's incredible. You know why? People get set in that word to say, mm -hmm. well, this is just a little sin. Yeah. Uh, I don't even consider this to be sin. I consider this to be my right. You ain't got no damn right. Mm. Uh, see? We got liberties that was granted to us in the law, but we haven't got any rights. What rights do we have? And you know what really bugs me? When somebody dies and a priest come up there to give him his last rights. That don't even make sense. You ain't got no rights. But what we have a tendency to do, like I said, we all have a tendency. We got some little thing we like to hold on to it. We say, yeah. for God understand my heart. Right, he understands that, that wickedness is still there, and he's going to give you problems until it's purged out. Uh, uh, chapter 20, 2 Kings 20. Pick that up from verse 6. Uh, 20. 20, 20. Yeah. Mm. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 20. Yeah. Mm. 
and the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yehudah? And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh, his son, reigned in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hepzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, after the abominations of the heathen, whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. All the things that the Father has made up for the Son, you see what the Son did? Right. Right. Go ahead, brother. Mm. Yes, sir. Verse 3. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yahweh, of which Yahweh said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. Hmm. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahweh. And he made his sons pass through the fire, and observe times, and use enchantments, and dealt with mediums and wizards, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yahweh to provoke Yahweh to anger. And he set a graven image, graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which Yahweh said to Dawid and to Slobo, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave to their fathers, if only they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moshe commanded them. But they hearken not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahweh spoke by his servants, the prophet said, Because Manasseh, king of Yehudah, have done these abominations, and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did who were before him, and have made Yehudah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Yehudah, that whosoever heareth of it, both of his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wiped a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies, because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin by which he made Yehuda to sin in doing evil in the sight of Yahweh. Uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 33 and uh, uh, verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 9. So Manasseh made Yehudah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom Yahweh had destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahweh spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Mm -hmm. Wherefore Yahweh brought, up, brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh in chains and bound him with feathers and carried him to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And when Manasseh was in affliction, he besought Yahweh, his Elohim, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated by him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. <laughs> then Manasseh knew that Yahweh, he was God. <laughs> now after this, he built an altar wall for the city of Dawid, 
on the west side of Jahan in the valley, even to the entrance of the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fortified cities of Yehudah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of Yahweh, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of Yahweh, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of Yahweh, and sacrificed on it peace offerings and thank offerings, and commanded Yehudah to serve Yahweh Elohim of Yisrael. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto Yahweh their Elohim only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his Elohim and the words of the seals who spoke to him in the name of Yahweh Elohim of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how Elohim was entreated by him. Verse 19. His prayer also and how Elohim was entreated by him and all his sin and his trespass and the sites on which he built high places and set up groves and graven images before he was humble. Behold, they are written among the sins of the seals. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign and reigned two years in Jerusalem but Ammon did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, as did Manasseh, his father. For Ammon sacrificed unto all the great carbon images which Manasseh, his father, had made, and served them, and humbled not himself before Yahweh, as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more, and his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his state. Mm -hmm. So the brother saying here then that even though the guy was wicked, he was still the Lord's anointed, right? Yes, sir. He and was he, upon y'all very strong. And these people slew him they for what they had done. Right? Right. right. You remember what David said? Uh, 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 what David did when this young man came, came to him and said, look, I saw Saul and so forth. He told me to kill him and I went on and killed him and so forth. And he had Saul's bracelets and so forth and so on. David so he said, man, go over there and kill that dude. Right. Man, you mean to tell me you didn't have, you had to, you weren't afraid to lift your hand against the Lord's and all? Right. You go kill it. Took care of that. Dude. Well, it shows, too, that Manasseh, with all his wickedness, he, he, he had to be beat down, of course. Once he was beaten down and he looked up and saw Yahweh, then he was restored back into this. Position. Right. But then what happened to it? That iniquity was visited upon his son, wasn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. when he 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, and walked in the ways of Dawid, his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of Dawid, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Yehuda and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the melted and cast images. Right, he was sick. This brother here was only 16 years old then. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead now. Verse 4. And they broke down the altars of Baalim in his presence and the images that were on high above them he cut down and the groves and the carved images and the, and the molten images <coughs> he broke in pieces and made dust of them and scattered it upon the graves of them who had sacrificed unto them. Mm -hmm. And he burned the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Yehuda and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali, in their ruins round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Asaliah, and Melsiah, the governor of the city, and Yah, the son of Yahaz, the recorder, to repair the house of Yahweh, his Elohim. And when they came to Hilkiah, the high priest, 
They delivered the money that was brought into the house of Elohim, which the Levites who kept the doors had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and of all the remnant of Israel and of all Yehuda and Benjamin, and they returned to Jerusalem. And they put it in the hand of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of Yahweh, and they gave it to the workmen who wrought in the house of Yahweh to repair and mend the house. Even to the craftsmen and the builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to floor the houses which the kings of Yehuda had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them were Yehath and Obawahu, the Levites of the sons of Moriah, and Zechariah and Meshulam of the sons of the Kohathites to set it forward, and others of the Levites, all who were who could skill of instruments of music. Also, they were over the barrels of burdens and were overseers of all who wrought the work in any manner of service. And of the Levites, there were scribes and officers and porters. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh, Hilkiah, the priest, found a book of the law of Yahweh given by Moshe. He didn't find the book. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Check that out. They found, they stumble on the going looking for money. They found the book. Found some money. Go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> Verse 15. And Hilkiah said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahweh. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to your servants, they are doing. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of Yahweh and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest have given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. I mean, the land had got so bad, man, that, that the priest didn't even know what they was doing. They were just doing just about what they wanted to do if they didn't have the book of the law. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 19. And it came to pass, when Josiah had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. Mm -hmm. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan, the scribe, and Isaiah, a servant of the king, said, Go, inquire of Yahweh for me, and for them who are left in Israel and in Yehudah concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yahweh that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of Yahweh to do all that is written in this book. Mm -hmm. And Hilkiah and they whom the king had appointed went to Haldar, the prophetess, the wife of Shalon, the son of Tokhath, the son of Hazar, Hazra, keep of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spoke to her that effect. Now, in the New Testament, there was a woman named Anna that dwelt in Jerusalem in the college station. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. See, one thing about Robert. them sisters, them sisters have always been around and do what was necessary to do. They weren't in the, in, in the position of priests, but they was always around to do what? To help. Oh, yeah. Like Yahweh told, uh, like Yahweh said up in the garden, Adam, you need some help. <coughs> I have to make help for you. Amen. Go ahead and read, uh, and Behind every great man, usually, there's a great woman. Uh-oh. Verse 23, and she answered them, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Tell you the man who sent you to me. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon its inhabitants, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Yehudah, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Yehudah, who sent you to inquire of Yahweh, so shall you say unto him, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel concerning the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender, and you did humble yourself before Elohim, when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and humbled yourself before me, and did rend your clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard you also, says Yahweh. Mm. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be get gathered to your grave in peace. 
neither shall your eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Mm -hmm. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahweh, and all the men of Yehuda, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the Levites, and all the people, great and small, and he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of Yahweh. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before Yahweh to walk after Yahweh and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he caused all who were present to Ye in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of Elohim, the God of their fathers. Mm -hmm. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel and made all who were present in Israel to serve, even to serve Yahweh, their Elohim. And all his days they departed not from following Yahweh, the Elohim of their fathers. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto Yahweh in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Amen. And he set the priests in their charge and encouraged the priests and encouraged them to the servants of the house of Yahweh, and said unto the Levites who taught all Israel who were holy unto Yahweh, Put the holy ark in the house which Slomo, the son of Dawid, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now Yahweh, your Elohim, and his people Israel, and prepare yourselves by the house of your fathers after your courses, according to the writing of Dawid, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Slomo, his son. Right. Now they killed the Passover on the 14th day, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in other words, Passover had to begin on the 13th of the evening. Uh -huh. Why is the brothers wait till the 14th day of sunset to say they keep the Passover? No, they're not I'm going into feast of the bread. You know, Elder, that seems to be one reoccurring thing throughout the whole biblical story that seems to be salvation for most of the participants, and that seems to be humility. Mm -hmm. Humbleness has been something that has saved the kings from eat, from the beginning unto the end. So it seems that that's some a, a very important element that all of us need to remember in order to achieve some level of salvation. Right. We need to go back and read Isaiah 30 chapter. Say, because the daughters of Zion walk party mm -hmm. with the neck stretched forth and warning eyes mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. and so on, you know, mm -hmm. with all that jewelry and all that stuff, all that finery in their place. I'm going to take all that junk from them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see, why the poor, hardy, bro. you see why the poor can will more easily inherit the earth. Right. See, we do walk hardy. That's why when a brother or a sister come up to me and say, well, you know, I know so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, but I think when they say that, I'm uh -huh. through with it. <laughs> I'm through with it. You're entitled to your thoughts, but I'm through with it. Everything else you say sound like, all right, you're doing it all out, because I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Verse 5. And stand in the holy places according to the divisions of the families of your of the fathers of your brethren, the peoples, and after division of the families of the Levites. Mm -hmm. So kill the Passover and sanctify yourselves and prepare your brethren that they may do according to the word of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. Mm -hmm. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock lambs and kids, all for the Passover offerings. For all who were present to the number of 30,000 and 3,000 bullocks, that these were of the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hekiah and Zechariah, and Yehiah, rulers of the house of Elohim, gave unto the priests for the Passover offering 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. Hmm. Konaniah also and Shemaiah, and Nethanel, his brethren, and Hashabiah, and Yael, and Yosabad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings 5,000 small cattle and 500 oxen. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses according to the king's commandment. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites flayed them. Hmm. 
And they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto Yahweh, as it is written in the book of Moshe, and so they did with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance, but the other holy offerings saw they in pots and in cauldrons and in pans, and divided them speedily among all the people. Mm -hmm. And afterward they made ready for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busy in offerings of burnt offerings and the fat unto night. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves <coughs> and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place according to the commandment of Dawid, and Asaph, and Heman, and Yedutan the king's seal. And the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their service, for their brethren, the Levites, prepared for them. So all the service of Yahweh was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of Yahweh according to, to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. And there was no Passover like that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites and all Yehuda and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Koshimus by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with you, you king of Yehuda? I come not against you this day, but against the house with which I have war. For Elohim commanded me to make haste. Forbear you from meddling with Elohim who is with me, that he destroy you not. Right, and guess your side said, man, you're him, right? Right. Y'all ain't told you to go do nothing, Johnny. I'm gonna right. fight with you. Right. What do you mean, brother? Yes, sir. Verse 22. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the word of Necho from the mouth of Elohim, and came to fight in the battle of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King, Mos king Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the graves of his fathers. And all Yehuda and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Right. Brother disguised himself to go die. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't he, uh, I mean, you just made the comment, and certainly that was a rational comment that any Hebrew Israelite would think, but it seems to me that the problem came up because he didn't consult uh, the prophet concerning that issue before he went into battle. The problem came up because he didn't have no business meddling in other men's matters. Mm -hmm. Right. See, that's what the problem was. The man wasn't he coming to fight him. He was going to fight somebody else, right? Right. But he's so hard under the collar. He done did so much for the Lord. He wants to jump in the battle, right? Mm -hmm. And he jumped in the battle and died. Mm -hmm. You see, that's that's what the deal was. See, that's what being busy about is another man's matter. See, that's why I don't go to them old covenant camp. That's why I don't fellowship with them brothers. You know why? I know who they serve. Right. They serve the adversary. I don't give a damn whether they know the Israel or not. They serve the adversary, the devil, because they don't believe in the Messiah. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see, so what I do is this, I stay away from these them brothers so my presence won't cause them some problems. Mm -hmm. uh, either uh, the death angel come and I'm in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time. <laughs> so I leave them brothers alone. What, what am I going to fellowship for? Right. To see how they dress? Right. I dress the way I want to dress. I don't care how, how nobody else dress. Right. You see, so what, what's the sense of me fellowship with them? So they can teach me how to speak Hebrew. Yahweh told me, said, when I set up this kingdom, I'm going to turn to the people of New Life. Right. That means what I got to do if I speak Hebrew, I got to go hang out with them to have a conversation <laughs> in Hebrew, right? right. Yahweh said, with stammering lips in another language, that I teach to speak. Amen. Well, they got some businesses over there, you know. I know what the deal is, brother. It's all about that dollar and that power. I know what the whole deal is about. Yeah.
They're Good. nationalists, right? Yeah. They hang out with each other. That's all. Verse 2 Kings, chapter 35, verse 25. And Yahweh lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spoke of Josiah and their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the lamentations. Hold up, he said Second Kings, Second, Second Chronicles. Chronicles. Second Chronicles, I'm sorry. Right where we are. You read it right, just when we called it out. Though. Second Chron <laughs> Chronicles, chapter 35, verse 26. Sorry. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to that which was written in the law of Yahweh, and his deeds, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Yehuda. Hmm. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt turned him at Jerusalem. I'm sorry, put down him at Jerusalem. Put him and, down. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem and found the land and hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Yehuda and Jerusalem and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Nico took Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Okay, 2 Kings 23 and 34. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 34. Second Kings what? 23 and verse 34. Oh, okay. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 34. So the kingship never did because one family did. They stayed in there until there was nobody left to put in. Of course. That's, that's, that's what the blessing was. The scepter should not be. Uh, Genesis uh, uh, 49 and 10. The scepter should not depart from Judah, nor law give, law, nor law give from between his feet until Shiloh come and tell him, and to him <coughs> shall be gathered another people. Mm -hmm. Judah was the lion swept among the prey, brother. He raised, he crouched, he raised like an old lion, right? Who's going to put him down? Mm -hmm. Judas is, 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 this is why everybody want to be the house of Judah. Right. Because Judah is destined for greatness. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings uh, 23, and verse 34. My God. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the stead of Josiah, his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim, and took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold from the people of the land of everyone according to his valuation to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. Now, let's, let's, let's go hold your place right there. Put something in the book because we're going to come back here. Let's go in Jeremiah 30, uh, 25 in verse 1. Give me Yahoo 25 and verse 1. Give me Yahoo 25 and verse 1. Verse 1. The word that came to Yahweh concerning all the people of Yehuda in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Yahweh the prophet spoke unto all the people of Yehuda and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Yehuda, even unto this day, that is the twenty-third year, the word of Yahweh have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. And Yahweh have sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn again now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that Yahweh have given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hand, and I will do you no hurt. <laughs> Yet you have not hearkened unto me, says Yahweh, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, 
because you have not heard my words, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says Yahweh, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against its inhabitants and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them in horror and in hissing and perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sign of the millstone and the light of the candle. Hmm. And this whole land shall be a desolation and in horror, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says Yahweh, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolation. And I will bring upon that land all my words that which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Yahweh, Yahweh, I'm sorry, have prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will, will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. 26 and 1. <clears throat> In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, came this word from Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh, Stand in the court of Yahweh's house, and speak unto all the cities of Yehuda, which come to worship in Yahweh's house, all the words that I command you to speak unto them, diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent of this evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. And you shall say unto them, Thus says Yahweh, If you will not hearken to me to walk in my law which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but you have not hearkened, then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Yeremiah who speaking these words in the house of God. And to show you that this has already taken place, do you know that everybody that has lived in the land of Israel has had war from generation to generation since we've been out of that land? So it has been a curse to the nation. Where do you go? Verse 8. Now it came to pass, when Yahweh had ceased speaking all that Yahweh had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, You shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Why have you prophesied in the name of Yahweh, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Yahweh in the house of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. When the princes of Yehuda heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of Yahweh and sat down in the entrance of the new gate of Yahweh's house. Then spoke the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city as you have heard with your ears. Then spoke Yahweh unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, Yahweh sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that you have heard. Mm -hmm. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim and Yahweh will repent of the evils that he has pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seem of good and right unto you. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon its inhabitants. For of a truth, Yahweh have sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Then said the princes and all the people unto the priests and to the prophets, This man is not worthy to die. For he hath spoken to us in the name of Yahweh, our Elohim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then rose up certain of the elders of the land and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah, the Morastite, prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, and spoke to all the people of Yehuda, saying, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, 
and Jerusalem shall become heat, mm -hmm. and the mountain of the house, and the mountain of the house, like the high places of the forest. Right. See. Now he said all these things gonna come upon Jerusalem. Right. Mm -hmm. Now understand that. Now let me show you what he did. <coughs> <coughs> He tore down the house mm -hmm. and kicked the inhabitants out of the land mm -hmm. and caused the name to cease from among men. Mm -hmm. Did right. Did mm -hmm. Now we know, according to the prophets, that Israel cannot return to the land until just before. Uh, uh, well, they won't return to the land then. They won't return to the land until just before the Messiah shows up on the scene. Mm -hmm. Just a few days before the Messiah shows up on the scene is when Judah is going to return uh, uh, to the city of Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make the Messiah uh, a return when the army is being besieged both against Judah and Jerusalem, right? Amen. Do you know that everybody that's in that land there by a house is going to be killed off by the beast of the false prophet? Uh, this is why when folks offer me tickets and so forth, man, why don't you go over there and look around? I don't want to see nothing. Right. I might be over there somewhere, but no, no, no. I want to stay right Stop. here until time for me to get out and go over there. Man, but you need to see your land. I'll see it when the time comes. Amen. What's the sense right. of me going home and other people can come back and say, hey, you, pack up that damn house. You got to move it over there. Mm -hmm. I, father, right. I got to pack up that house and move it over there because Esau tells. Right. Uh -huh. See? Exactly. Then the Palestinians come in and say, no. Take that house out of water over here and move it down there. Uh -huh. And I'm still a captain moving to and from my own land. Mm -hmm. Ain't got no power, right? right. Y'all know why? Y'all we kicked us out of the land right. and told us when you can return. Right. Everybody that's in the land of Israel today is in there illegally, regardless right. of who it is. So it's, it's and y'all we gonna recompense it for them. So there's an iniquity that Judas over there today. Of course there's Washington, Benjamin and all of them. They define the true and living God. Right. But see, they're princes. Mm -hmm. So they can do it. See? Mm -hmm. They are princes. Yeah, with no power. See? Brother say, I'm a prince of the house of Judah. Right. Brother, it's three tribes over here. You don't know which house you come from. Why are you going to tell me you're a Judite? Mm -hmm. Why have I got to believe you're a Judite? Because you say you're a prince. Mm -hmm. You're a slave. Mm -hmm. And that's where Esau, he's going to become prime minister in his land. You saw what happened, didn't you? <laughs> the next day, they cut off, uh, uh, they cut <laughs> off, they kicked them out of the stop from coming in Jerusalem right. and cut off all of the resources they had given them, jobs and so forth. They right. come in Jerusalem and work, they were selling drugs and a whole lot of other things they were doing in Jerusalem. Kicked them out of the city and if it wasn't for the people at Haifa, they would have starved to death. Exactly. The people at Haifa sent them water and food uh, 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 once a week by truck. Right. You see, simply because Yahweh had kicked them out of the land. And check this out. It was, they, they don't believe in the great king, the one that's going to come and redeem them. But the father that they say they believe in is the one that they're in complete disobedience to. Of course. Of course, my brother. You know where that comes from? Yeah. They come from that curse. Go and tell his people, hear you indeed. I say, hey, chapter. Right. Go and tell you, go and tell his people, hear you indeed, but perceive not. See you indeed, but uh, understand not. Make the heart of this people get fat. Bad. And ain't they fat? Real fat. How can a brother walk around in this in this land? Land of the uh, 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 land of the free and home of the brave. How can a brother walk around in this captivity talking about, I'm a prince. Trying to slave. Right, so well, where's the land that you're ruling on? <laughs> well, we got a place over there. No, 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 no. The United States government contain, uh, 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 claim eminent domain. Yes, sir. They come in there and tear down that little place you got to build a parking lot there. There ain't nothing you can say. And you going to tell me you're a prince over there? Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, Elvin, it should be a sign to everybody that those brothers who claim to be princes and claim to be king of Israel, they either in dire straits or they're in jail. Of course. So they should look at that. Of course. All of them gotten in trouble one time or another. Of course. We're going to get in trouble too, so it ain't necessary. But see, the thing of it is, is this. You are not going to get in trouble because you are in violation of God's law. Right. Amen. See, Amen. you're going to get in trouble because the Messiah said, whosoever killed you is going to think he did God a service. Right. Exactly. You're going to get in trouble because of the fact that you are telling the truth. Let's go read that testimony. That testimony. Let's go read Uh-oh. Not the Lord's word. Let's go read Got him, Don't say I'm Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. And pick this up with verse 9.
Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they had. I saw who? The souls of those that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony they had, right? Revelation uh, 12 chapter show you when the dragon was cast out, he went to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed who had keep the commandments of, of, of God and have the testimony of Yahshua, the Messiah, right? So we got brothers talking about their princes don't even believe in the Messiah. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Adonai, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Mm -hmm. Amen. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. That should be what? Killed as they were should be fulfilled, right? right. Let's go back in the book of Daniel. Daniel uh, 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 11, we pick that up at, uh, at uh, people uh, at verse 29, Daniel 11, verse 29. So dying for the right thing is going to be a release, isn't it? Come on. Happy are you? Yes, sir, brother. Yeah. That's why I told you a long time ago. I said, man, you know, when I was out there in the street, man, I was worried about that. Right. <laughs> but since I've been under the blood of Messiah, man, if it comes right now, I'm not worried about it anymore. <laughs> because I know that a de the death of a servant of God is nothing but the beginning of a life for Amen. 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 Y'all believe what y'all want. My salvation is already sealed, and I know it. All right. Amen. Amen. Uh, that don't mean I'm going to attain to it. But it's sealed. The promise has been made. I'm going to hang with you until they try to send that chair in. No, no, no. I'm getting y'all away from me. <laughs> I'm going hang with you, bro. That's why when I get out of church, I go in my office. <laughs> close the door. I'm going to get y'all away from me. <laughs> uh, uh, pick this up at Daniel 11, and verse 29. Yes, sir. At the time of party, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Now, this is after the battle between the Antichrist, the, the Muslims in the Middle East, and uh, 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 the beast, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Verse 30. For the ships of Greece shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make up death. Right. Esau is going to start sacrificing to his feast, right? Mm -hmm. And he's going to sacrifice for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that three and a half years, the Pope going to come in there and say, well, look, I'm king now. I'm God. I'm on the scene, right? Right. Go ahead and see what's going to happen here. For the people who may not know, who is Esau? People sitting in the land today talking about their youth. Okay. Well, there's two people in the land talking about their youth. The one yeah. that's Jew, that's called the Jews, they're the ones saying they're the house of Judah. That's what I'm talking about when I say Esau. Now, the Palestinian, Israel is Palestine. Amen. We're the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So the Palestinians is uh, Moab and Ammon, uh, Abraham's nephew, Lot's two boys. They've even exalted themselves against our boys. Mm -hmm. so not, but when I say uh, uh, the Jews, I'm talking about Esau. Yeah. Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 31. And all shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make of desolate. And the Messiah said, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever read, let him understand. Amen. Then let him that is be in Judea flee to the mouth. Mm -hmm. Let the him that is in the house uh, don't go back in to take his coat, right? Because there's going to be a time of trouble like it never was and never will be. Mm -hmm. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. Verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. 
But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. But the people that do, doing all this time on, Amen. but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits, right? Amen. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Mm. Amen. Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flattery. But many are going to still cleave to them with flatteries, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead for that jump, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 33. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Right, see, yeah. you got the opportunity to do what you need to do now. Amen. This is why I tell y'all, Yahweh brought you here to put you to work. Amen. If you don't want to get to work, you better get out of here. Mm. I'll tell you why. If you ain't got no work, what you gonna offer? What sacrifice are you gonna offer for your sin? Hallelujah. You ain't got nothing. You got a clean slate, ain't you? Mm. Mm. I believe. See, y'all uh, can't do the work ahead of time. If not, just say so you get in here and you don't do the work, and the ship that you own when you leave here goes to Europe. Mm. Instead of to that wilderness, right? Oh. You're going to have to deal, you're going to have to deal. Yeah, the deal. beast is going to cause you so much problems. Gonna be, you're going to be scared to go to sleep, scared to wake up. Amen. Yeah. But see, that's to make you do what? Make you do your job then. Once that beast gets to breathing down your neck, yes, then sir. you'll go to work. Mm. You know how we do things. We ain't going to do things until the white folks jump on our butt. Then we go do what we got to do. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to where we were. That's a question in the back of it. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, a lot of programs I watch on TV, uh, they don't even deal with judgment no more. Mm -hmm. They just go straight from the grave, I mean, straight from dying, straight to heaven. Right. We went to a movie, man, we went and saw. They had hyped up this little movie that we, me and some brothers, went to see downtown in Colony Square, I think. Yeah. We went down there, and the Messiah had returned, right? He was in jail. <laughs> I don't know where they got that. <laughs> they ain't written the book, no. See, he was in jail. And then after he got out of jail, he was walking down the street. And while he was walking down the street, my people just disappeared. <laughs> just disappeared. <laughs> Gone on our camera while he was walking down the street. <laughs> Biggest lie I've ever been told. See, but guess who put that junk together? Judah. Hmm. Our own people put that junk together, see. What we did was this. We fed off the European and said, well, we're going to get back to what's really going down and then show just what the European was talking about. Right. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Mm. Ain't that what black folks used to say? Right. Mm. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. And that's just what it means. Everybody just talking about heaven ain't going there. <laughs> hey, Messiah is coming here. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers, knew what they was, the brothers and sisters that came over here slaves, people talk about how illiterate they were and Bro. so forth and so on. Y'all ought to read some of the letters that they wrote yes, to some sir. of the relatives in this country here. Oh. See, them folks knew how to speak this language when they got here. The slave trade started long before they brought the first slaves up. They had time to teach them. How do you think the, the, the master went out there, he got 500 slaves, to go out there, I want y'all to fly that field over, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, they went and did it. Right. They didn't have to have no interpreters. <laughs> well, they had been under occupation of the Romans anyway, right? Right. So they knew all the languages of the other lands, right? Of course they did. Our people always spoke many languages, man. That's why... Right. Uh, 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 a lot of times you read in the prophets where people came up and said something, they weren't speaking in uh, in, 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 in the Jews' language, they were speaking in their own language, mm -hmm. but we understood what they were saying. Right. Let's go back and pick this up where we were in Jeremiah, brother. Where were you? Daniel. Daniel. 26. Daniel is where we, and, uh, we 26, right verse 1. We started in 26 and verse 1. Right. <laughs> Daniel 26 and verse 1. Hamites and other uh, people in the other parts of the world, they, they, come, they know English language plus their language. Mm -hmm. We are only I guess the that only know one language. Right. That's, the that's, the that's because of the slavery. That's what it's because. It's because of the slavery that we only had to deal with one language in, in the South. Mm -hmm. And that was this. The Southern draw is deal. That's all we had to do. So we didn't have to be multilingual people because we weren't dealing with people of other nations. 
Then a lot of us over here spoke a lot of different languages too. When you look right at it, brother, because not only did they speak the language that uh, the they the languages that they had learned in Africa, a lot of our people do up them Indians, man. Right. And they had to learn the different tribal languages of those Indians and so forth. But as far as other nations is concerned, man, we didn't learn the languages of another other nation. When the conquistadors, the Spanish conquistadors came over here with that jump, man, we didn't understand what they was talking about. Mm. Okay, go ahead and pick this up, chapter 26 and uh, verse 19. Verse 19. Yahoo, chapter 26, verse 19. Did Hezekiah, the king of Yehuda, and all Yehuda put him at all to death? Did he not fear Yahweh and besought Yahweh? And Yahweh repented of the evil which he had pronounced against them? Thus might we procure procure great evil against our soul. Mm -hmm. And there was also a man who prophesied in the name of Yahweh, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah, of Kariot, the Yerim, who prophesied against this city and against this land according to all the words of Yahweh. And when Jehoiakim, the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. Mm. But when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went into Egypt. And Jehoiakim, the king, sent men into Egypt, namely, namely Elnathan, the son of Agbor, and certain men with him into Egypt. And they fetched Uriah out of Egypt and brought him unto Jehoiakim, the king, who slew him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Hmm. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan was, was with Yahu, that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Okay, uh, 2 Kings, uh, 2 Kings uh, uh, 24, verse 1. 2 Kings 24, and, uh, verse 1. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And Yahweh sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Yehuda to destroy it, according to the word of Yahweh, which he did speak by his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Surely at the, at the commandment of Yahweh came this upon Yehuda to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yahweh would not pardon. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yehuda? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land. For the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Euphrates, the river of Egypt. Okay, I'm sorry. Verse 7. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land. For the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river of Euphrates all that pertains to the king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months, and his mother's name was Nehushtah, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiachin, king, the king of Yehuda, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And you know what? No, that was it. Okay. Go ahead and do it. And he carried out from there all the treasures of the house of Yahweh, 
and the treasures of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Shlomo, king of Israel, had made in the temple of Yahweh, as Yahweh had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captains and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remains except the poorest sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiachim to Babylon and the king's mother and the king's wives and his officers and the might of the land. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now they got released. I think, uh, I think some of you sisters might have seen the pictures of those released uh, in the Bible class. You see the release where the king of Assyria and different kings was carrying uh, the house of Judah away, carrying that uh, menorah, right? Mm -hmm. And you check the uh, the way they had the hair tied and it all cut off right at the edge, watch mm -hmm. right, right, right below the ear. So y'all have seen pictures that were that was actually done by artists in other lands in those days that archaeologists have dug up to let you know that the Bible is right on the money. Mm -hmm. And folks can't tell me King James wrote it, but he was a monster if he did. Because he wrote everything just like it happened. Okay. Amen. Go ahead and read Verse 16. And all the men of might, even 7,000, and craftsmen and smiths a thousand, all who were strong and out for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Now, this was during the first deportation, right? Mm -hmm. This was the deportation that Daniel was in. See, they, they took the princes first, right? Mm -hmm. And Daniel was a prince in Egypt, was mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Israel, was mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those brothers were princes in the land. Amen. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Zedekiah was 20 years old when he was to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Yermiyahu of Libnah. And Zedekiah did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. But through the anger of Yahweh, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Yehuda, until he had cast them out from his presence, <laughs> that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Uh, Jeremiah 21 and verse 1. <coughs> Jeremiah what now? 21 and verse 1. Oh, okay. Jeremiah 21 and verse 1. You know, as I was reading this, I was noticing how Nebuchadnezzar was even called a servant of God, of Elohim, mm -hmm. even though this was evil. Sure. So one can be called a servant, and he was even a servant of the Most High, and still would be a servant for the negative rather than the positive. Satan is a servant. Right. Amen. Yeah, He's just doing, he's carrying out Yahweh's will. That's all. Satan is a servant. Remember when he brought Cyrus in, he felt called Cyrus a servant. Right. He is a servant. Uh, all of us are servants of the true and living God. By the way, you serve him or not, you still serve him. Mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, you know, uh, me and a brother uh, uh, had a conversation the other night. He said, you know, uh, uh, God willed that all men should be saved. So if you will that all men be saved, why you got enemies? Mm -hmm. so why are those enemies going to end up in that lake of fire? Mm -hmm. so simply because they were appointed to that. Somebody, prophet, prophecies were, were, were made. Somebody got to stand in, sta in, in that stead of whatever the prophecy say. Exactly. When he talked about the abomination of desolation, it's Yahweh who brought the order to this for man. See, uh, this ain't nothing that man just concocted on his own. Amen. Yahweh let Satan loose on him. He said, uh, in Revelation 12, in Revelation 12 chapter, said there appeared another one wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and moon on, on her feet. Well, that was talking about Israel. It said that there appeared another one in heaven, a great red dragon, right. having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, right? right? right. Well, these things was already prophesied that it was going to take place from the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh had already, these people aren't born yet. Haven't been born at that time. And Yahweh had already done one before it done the death. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why I tell people, you can't serve Yahweh unless he wants you to. Amen. We look at man and say, well, you know, man is this, man is that, man just like the beast out there in the field. Yeah. Right. That's what he is. Right. Yahweh saving him because that's who he want to save, and you can't serve him unless he wants you to be saved. Mm -hmm. Not in the capacity of salvation. Now, all of us serve him. All, all mankind serving the righteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. 
and the wicked do wicked because that's what he wants them to do. Right. The righteous do righteous because that's what he wills for them to do. The perfect you. example then is, is Solomon, right, brother? Right. Yahweh could have kept Solomon from doing what he did. Right. Right. Wise man. Right. He said there will never be a man like as, as much wisdom as he, and never will be another man as much wisdom as him. Now the Messiah said a greater than Solomon. Right. He didn't say a man with more wisdom. In his youth, anyway. So, yeah, Solomon did all right. You got over. What you? What made you? Why, why do you think that Yahweh allowed the adversary, the devil, to come in there? He could have just as well sent the prophet to Solomon and said, Solomon, the women that you've been married, you've got old now. Right. And then women, you can't cut the mustard anymore. And then women that you got, they're going to cause you to fall away. They don't want you to be a god in their land because, man, it takes 11 or 12, 15 days for them to go all the way back home to worship their god. So they're going to cause you to, they're going to try to cause you to be a god in their land. Don't you do that. Right. Y'all, we could have went to Solomon and uh, did that, but he didn't want to. You know why? He had to tear this kingdom down so you can be saved. Amen. It's got to do with you. That's what it's got to do with Uh-oh. 19 to 1. 21 to 1. Jeremiah 21. The word which came to Yahweh from Yahweh when King Zedekiah sent him unto Hashur, the son of Malachi, Micaiah, I'm sorry, Micaiah, and Sephaniah, the son of Melsiah, the priest said, Inquire, pray ye, of Yahweh for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that Yahweh will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then said Yahweh unto them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, with which you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, who besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of this city. Right, you should be, you, you going to inquire me? You of all people? Mm. You Zedekiah? Uh-uh. I'm going to assemble all these folks right here in the middle of Jerusalem. Yeah, man, you fight against that. Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 5. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. Uh -oh. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. Man, it got so bad in the, in the city, man, people ate their own children. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they ate doves to them. Right. They ate whatever they could get their hands on it that the family was so bad in the city. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. See, when y'all get on your case, you got a problem. Yes, you got a problem. You got a problem with Grandma and washing powder will take off. You got you a serious problem. Go ahead and read. Bro. Verse 7. And afterwards, says Yahweh, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Yehuda, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword and from the famine into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. And unto this people you shall say, Thus says Yahweh, Look, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. <laughs> He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. Right. They wouldn't believe that. So, mm -hmm. Jeremiah come with that. This a man, you done sided with them folks over there. Right. And they took that brother. And they wouldn't kill him because the prophets delivered him out of the hand. But they took that brother and let that brother put that brother down in the king uh, 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 dungeon in the mud. In the monkey mire. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's how the king of Babylon knew that he wasn't uh, part of it. He was down in the mud. And when he came and got him, he brought Jeremiah and said, "Look, man, you don't have to go down to Babylon. You go to Babylon. You go to Egypt. You stay here. You go anywhere you want to go." Because he knew that he was a prophet of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 10. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, says Yahweh. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Mm. And touching the house of the king of Yehuda, say, hear the word of Yahweh. O house of Dawid, thus says Yahweh, 
execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is fall out of the hand of the oppressor. Least my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain, says Yahweh, who say, who shall come down against us or who shall enter into our habitations? But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, Amen. says Yahweh, Amen. and I will kindle a fire in her forest, and it shall devour all things round about you. Mm -hmm. Thus says Yahweh, go down to the house of the king of Yehuda and speak that this word, and say, hear the word of Yahweh, O king of Yehuda, who sit upon the throne of Yahweh, you and your servants and your people that enter in by these gates. Thus says Yahweh, Execute judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. His hand was stretched out his field, wasn't it? Right. He said, I'll turn from my fierce wrath if you do what I tell you to do, right? Mm -hmm. But you're not Jake here. Jake wouldn't do what Jake wanted to do. Mm -hmm. See? Jake go and pray to the Lord about this, and the Lord bring it to him, and then Jake turn right around and do just what is in Jake's wicked, mm -hmm. wicked heart. Right. Go ahead and leave, man. People talk about God, man. People folks don't care about God. Folks care about what they're going to do. They God. They want to create them in their own image. Right. That's what they want to do. Go ahead and leave, bro. Verse 4. But if you do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house king sitting upon the throne of Dawid, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. Right, if you do this thing, I'm going to turn back everything and the king still going to come into this city. Riding up on horses, the land is going to wax fat, right? But you know what? He already knew that these brothers wasn't going to do what was right. You know why? These brothers thought they was gods, man. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What a small thing. Right. Me, myself, man, I ain't think I'm a god, man. Right. You know, uh, uh, you know, I think sometimes, you know, I, I sit down and I say, you know, I look at the things that when me and my Isha hooked up, all the vows that she made. You know why she made them vows? Because she she believed that that's what I wanted her to do. Right. Hmm. That's why I backed up and said, look here, you don't have to do none of that stuff. Right. And then now I care. Amen. And I started it. Let me finish. Go ahead and read it. Verse 5. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says Yahweh, that this house shall become a desolation. Mm -hmm. But thus says Yahweh unto the king's house of Yehuda, you are Gilead unto me and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make you a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited. And there was a bomb for Gilead. Remember that? Oh, yeah. There was a bomb for Gilead. But you know what happened, man? Them folks in Israel said, man, I don't want to deal with that. Right. Who is the Lord that I should obey when he had to say? Right. Huh? I can't see him. I can't touch it. I can't feel it, but I trust in your sword here I got in my hand. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. And I will prepare destroyers against you, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down your choice cedars and cast them into the fire. Mm -hmm. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbor, Why have Yahweh done thus to this great city? Then they shall answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of Yahweh, their Elohim, and worship other gods, and serve them. Because they have done what? Forsaken the covenant of their God, right? And worship other gods and serve them, right? Right. Check this out. It's another teacher in this city here, a young brother. Mm -mm. Young brother. Called in on the radio, trying to talk about things, and the man asked him the Ten Commandments, and he couldn't name the three. <laughs> 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 Big man. Big. Uh oh. Don't read, man. Verse 10. Weep not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth the way, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Mm -hmm. Man, that sounds like this so called Negro you know, brother. <laughs> man, that couldn't be the people in Israel today. No, sir, brother. Uh uh. No sir, the people that left out of that land, but they never did see their country no more. They, uh, Esau, that was in, 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 uh, in Israel after Israel fell, they went from fell, they went up into uh, Europe. He was able to go back in the time he wanted to. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
And Jake couldn't go nowhere because he couldn't drink all that water, brother, between he and Israel. Oh, Verse 11. But thou says Yahweh, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, who reigned instead of Josiah, his father, who went forth out of his out of this place. Now, brother came to him one night talking about uh, he was going into the lineage in the Bible of, of the Messiah, and he tried to show. See, this is why Paul told us not to be fussing about endless genealogies right. and, and strivings about law, which leads to nothing but conflict. Right. He didn't understand that a whole lot of folks had two names. Mm -hmm. Just like we know mm -hmm. that Yehoah house was Josiah's uh, son. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Call him Shem. He didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. But see, what that brother failed to understand is that his one, Mary and Joseph was out of the house of, of, of David, right? right? So it gave Joseph lineage in one place, and Mary's lineage in the other. Right. That's all. Like knowledge, like understanding. Of that. But see, he read the bus. You know why? Finding that meathead from Cincinnati, Zeru Babel. Mm. Uh -oh. mm. They probably made me as confused. There you go. <laughs> 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 One of them brothers that we see when he read in the book and it says Jesus Christ, he said J C. Right. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's what they do, brother. Here's run down there. Black it out. You know, we prayed one time, brother. We prayed in the name of the Son of God, uh, Yahshua the Messiah. And brother, he left. Of course. He said, yeah, God, we couldn't deal with that. Cool. Right. Go ahead and leave. Verse 11. But thou says Yahweh, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, who reigned instead of Josiah, his father, who went forth out of this place, he shall not return there anymore. But he shall die in the place where they have led him captive, and shall see this land no more. Woe unto him who buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by wrong, who use his neighbor's service without wages, and give him not for his work, who says, I will build myself a wide house and large chambers, and cut out windows, and it is panel with cedar and painted with vermilion. Right, got sealed and all in the ceilings and everything. Got sealed, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 15. Shall you reign because you clothed yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do judgment and justice and then it was well with him? Mm -hmm. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, says Yahweh? Amen. But your eyes and your heart are not but for your covetousness mm -hmm. and for shedding innocent blood and for oppression and for violence to do it. Mm. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning your whole king, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, ah, ah, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Adonai, ah, ah, his glory. Mm. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass, mm. drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Mm. Go up to Lebanon and cry out and lift up your voice in Bashan and cry out from the passes. For all your lovers are destroyed. I spoke unto you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear you. you got to say, I'm doing all right. Mm. I mean, you've been blessing me. God bless me. I'm doing fine. I ain't going to hear nothing you're going to say. Right. I'm going to follow the wicked imagination of my own mind. Right. I got me a house. Right. Good job. Got me a good job. Yeah. Make a free That's All right. I ain't sick. Refrigerator uh, food. Right. Right. Got food all in. I'm doing all right. Right. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the imagination of my own heart. I'm not going to go in. Find out instructions about this and instructions about right. that. I'm just going to do what I want to do, right? Vacationing twice? Right. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing, brother. I went to the Bob shop the other day over there on Albany Street. And uh, our brother Brown, mm -hmm. you're watching the shows, bro. Mm -hmm. Well, he never shows up. Of course not. And guess what? The niggas still think he has. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years we've been going over there. Right. He still think he's mad. Ah, uh, somebody back there, shut them young ones up. They ain't got no business being back there making all that noise. Who back there? Go ahead and read, brother. 
Yes, sir. Yermiyahu, chapter 22, verse 21. I spoke unto you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear. This have been your manner from your youth that you obey not my voice. Right, now all of us do the same thing. Before we came into the Word, we were accustomed to doing what we want to do. Right. So we do part of what the Lord say, and then we be part of what we say. <laughs> Don't Verse 22. The wind shall eat up all your pastors, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then shall you be ashamed and confounded for all your wickedness. Mm -hmm. O inhabitant of Lebanon, who make your nest in the cedars, how gracious shall you be when pains come upon you, the pain as of a woman in travail. As I live, says Yahweh, through Kaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck you from them. Right, he said, you were the signet on my right hand, but I'm going to take you off my right hand, mm. right? Go ahead, bro. Mm. Verse 25. And I will give you into the hand of those who seek your life, and into the hand of those whose face you fear, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and into the hand of the called mm -hmm. And I will cast you out and your mother who bore you into mm -hmm. another country where you were not born, and there shall you die. Mm -hmm. But to the land to which they desire to return, there shall they not return. Right, and guess what? He told Zedekiah, you say, you're going to Babylon, but you ain't going to even see it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I guess this brother say, now, nah, huh, can I go to Babylon? I don't see it. I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. King put his eyes out. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Put him in prison and kept him in there 20 years. Mm -hmm. Then let him out and dressed him. Mm -hmm. And let him <laughs> sit down among the people, fed him every day, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Humble them. Of course it did, brother. 20 years of being blind and in a prison, it takes, it's nothing, it's nothing like a good disease to make you turn to the Lord. Any kind of hardship. Throwing them plagues on you, Jack. Oh, brother mess around and get the maids or something, man. He be begging, maybe crying all over them cups. At the promise. temple every day. Right. right. Holiest man in temple. Walking, walking softly, one brick, brick, brick in. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Go ahead, read it, brother. Do that, bro. Yermiyahu, chapter 22, verse 28. Is this man, Kaniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel in which is no pleasure? Why are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not? Mm -hmm. O earth, earth, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, write this man childish, a man that shall not prosper in his days. But no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of thy weed and ruling any more in you. Can you bring that to pass? Yeah. Zedekiah was the last king. Second <coughs> oh Kings 25. In verse 1. Second Kings 25. In verse 1. So really what we're getting a chance to see is a very small, uh, have a little understanding as how the Most High outlines our ways as our future is unfolding because with these individuals he's basically letting us know what their future will be you have to learn how to follow the spirit exactly you have to learn how to see what the spirit is doing and then follow the spirit not your heart follow the spirit see a lot of time with our heart, we'll say, well, I do this and I guess I do that. That would be good for the congregation and so forth and so on. And the spirit comes and says, don't you do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Say, because I'm going to do just and, just and such. Mm -hmm. And then you got to back up, right? Then you got to brush it on in the chest. Oh, man, so and so and so and so. You such and such. Nigga, sit down. Right. That's all you got to do. Sit down. I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I think's best. You got to follow the spirit. Amen. <coughs> Second Kings chapter 25 verse 1 And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came, he and all his hosts against Jerusalem and encamped against it and they built forts against it round about and the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah 18 months 
18 months, brother. <coughs> Let me tell you something. You got a couple million people in the city. You let this city of Atlanta be besieged 18 months and see what happens. Right. You're supposed to be eating up each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't leave, brother. Verse 3. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate. What is good in the day of this calamity? I'm going to see Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 6. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. Now look what happened to his brother because of his unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. See, folks talk about, oh, God is sweet. Mm. Man, God is terrible. Right. Yahweh is terrible. Mm -hmm. You can look at the beginning of the creation and tell he was terrible. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. He created everything in chaos. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 7. And they slew the son of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with feathers of brass, and carried him to Babylon. The last thing he saw was all his boys being put to death. Right. His seed perished from the way he did. Right. Then now, Yahweh sent. Remember now, when we go back up to David, remember what happened with David and Uriah and Hittite? Right. Yahweh told him to go sit and send blood in his house, right? Right. See it right there? Yes, sir. Yeah, brother, so seeing that the kings were sitting on the earthly throne of Yahweh, they were just sitting ducks in the time that wrath came. That's around. all they were. Because uh, the king, when Yahweh told David, I'm going to send blood in your house, boy, that was the end of that whole thing, right? Right. The end of that whole thing just gave Solomon peace because he was David's son, because somebody had to build a house and he wanted Solomon to build it. Jedediah had to build that house. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burned the house of Yahweh, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people who were left in the city and the fugitives who fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carry away. Mm -hmm. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and the husbandmen. Mm -hmm. And the pillars of bronze that were in the house of Yahweh and the bases and the brazen sea that were was in the house of Yahweh did the Chaldeans break in pieces and carried the bronze of them to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of brass with which they ministered took their way. And the fire pans and the bases and such things as were of gold as gold and of silver as silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea and the bases which Slomo had made for the house of Yahweh. The brass of all these vessels was beyond weight. The height of the one pillar was 18 cubits, and the capital upon it was brass, and the height of the capital, three cubits, and the braided works and the pomegranates upon the capital round about, all of brass, and like unto these had the second pillar with braided work. Now, remember now, Solomon made these things out of gold. Right. Right? Right. And then as they went back and rebuilding the temple and so forth, what did they do? They made these things out of brass. They stepped down, son. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read them. Verse 18. And the captain of the guard took Zariah, the chief priest, and Sephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door, and out of the city he took an officer who was sent over the men of war, and five men of them who were, who were in the king's presence, who were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Yehuda was carried away out of their land. And as for the people who remained in the land of Yehuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahakam, the son of Shaphan, governor. Right, he made him a governor, not a king, a governor. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 
And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Jehonan, the son of Kerioth, and Sariah, the son of Tanhumeth, the, the Tophethite, and Ye Ye Yezaniah, the son of a Machathite, then their men. And Gedaliah swore to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldeans, dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. <laughs> but it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama of the sea royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Gedaliah, so that Gedaliah died, and the Jews, and the Chaldeans, who were with him at Mizpah, and all the people, both small and great, and the captain of the armies, arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. And it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiachim, king of Yehuda, in the 12th month, on the 7th and 20th day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did liberate Jehoiachin, king of Yehuda, from prison. And he spoke kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon and changed his prison garments. And he did eat his food regularly before him all the days of his life. And his alliance was a continual alliance, allowance, I'm sorry, given him by the king a daily rate for every day all the days of his life. Okay, now if you want to read what happened to Samaria, read the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, we're going to go in the book of Daniel and see what happened to uh, some of the house of Judah. Daniel 1, and pick that up in verse 1. Fellas, so, do you suppose the Michaelites were uh, the same thing we were later called the Michaelites? I don't think so. They could have been. I don't think so. The Maccabean was a word that was, the Maccabees was a word that was given to them by the people that means the hammer. And because of the hell that they were raised, the Maccabees were raised and trying to take the name. Were well, these the four that was left in the land? What? The Maccabees. No, the Maccabees come and came later on. The Maccabees came a long time after this. This, this is taking place in, uh, the five that Nebuchadnezzar came in Jerusalem in 606 BC. What you're talking about happened AD. Okay. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, sir. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Adonai gave Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Elohim which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessel into the treasure house of his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuch, that he would bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in our wisdom and gifted in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the called in. Mm -hmm. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end of them they might stand before the king. Can you imagine eating meat and drinking wine for three years? That's not healthy. No, brother, you're in bad shape, won't you? Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Yehuda. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariel, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and unto Azariel of Benigo. Now he gave him the name of his gods. Check this out. He got him some service now, right? So he's going to give him the name of his gods. Oh, ain't that deep? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Mm -hmm. Now Elohim had brought Daniel into favor and compassion with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, 
who have appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse like me than the children who are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head with the king. Right. See, the other people of his sort was not uh, 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 in this position here. So they ate what was in the land, right? But they had these brothers here. These brothers here were the ones that had a lot of understanding, right? So they kept him in captivity, right? Kept him in prison. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzah, whom the prince of the eunuchs have set o had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, <coughs> prove your service. I beseech you ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Mm -hmm. Then let our countenances be looked upon before you and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as you see, deal with your servant. Mm -hmm. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children who did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four children, Elohim gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matter of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep went from him. Then the king commanded to some of the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers, sorcerers and the Chaldeans to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation of it, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dung here. Mm -hmm. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation of it. Right. See how hard this those ads was? Say, now, wait a minute now. You astrologers. Y'all soothsayers. Y'all sorcerers, right? Y'all mighty men. If you don't show me this dream, I'm going to kill y'all. Tear down your house and kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and read, bro. The Mavs didn't take no mess, Jack. <laughs> they still don't. You, man, you get them Arabs, man, they get them Arabs psyched up. Get to tell them, man, if you go take this truck and drive this truck over there in that service station there, brother, and push this button as soon as you get in that service station, brother, and you're going to go instantly to heaven and have sex 77 times a day. Exactly. And get them dudes all psyched up, Jack, and they're going to blow up the whole world. That's actually a, uh, a philosophy among the Arab uh, religious sects. They got it from the Japanese, kamikazes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, common cotton and horses, bro. Well, but long before these uh, uh these, these later days. The 77 times issue. Yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servant in the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time. No, you're going to wait till this thing get away. See, that's what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to try, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, bro. Because you see the thing is gone from me. Mm -hmm. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. But you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time is changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. Mm -hmm. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There's not a man upon the earth that can reveal the king's matter. Therefore, there's no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such thing of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. 
and it is a rare thing that the king requires, and there is no other that can reveal it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Mm -hmm. For this cause, the king was very was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they saw Daniel and his fellows to be slain. The decree went forth, and then they killed the men that was in there, did <coughs> They went and saw Daniel, saw them from <laughs> kill them, did they? They didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> right. Go ahead, read, bro. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, who was going forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Mm -hmm. Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azario, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the Elohim of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. He did just what he was supposed to do, did he? Exactly. Went and revealed it to the brother man, y'all pray to the Lord. That he revealed this thing to us because if y'all we don't believe reveal this thing to us, we're gonna be slain too, and we haven't done anything. Right. We didn't have nothing to do with that. We don't stand in the king's court yet. Hmm. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the Elohim of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. For he changed the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He give wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to those who know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Mm -hmm. I thank you and praise you, O you Elohim of my fathers, who have given me who have given me wisdom and might, and have made known unto me now what we desired of you. For you have now made known unto us the king's matter. Amen. Therefore, Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will reveal unto the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Yehuda that will make known unto the king the interpretation. He didn't find nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what you hear? Right. You see, he wants to reward the thing. Ah, uh, King, I found the man's gonna take care of this for you. Don't forget me. <laughs> going to read, man. Yes, sir. Verse 26. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation of it? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise man, the astrologers, the magician, the soothsayers reveal unto the king. But there is a God in heaven who revealeth secrets and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Amen. Your dreams and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came into your mind upon your bed, what should come to pass hereafter. And he who revealeth secrets make known to you what should come to pass. Mm -hmm. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than in the living. Mm -hmm. But for their sake that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that you might know the thoughts of your heart. Mm -hmm. You, O king, saw and behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before you, and the form of it was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, its breast and its arm of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. Now, if you notice this this, this statue, y'all have had this. Y'all have seen all these pictures and everything. The statue got cheaper and cheaper mm -hmm. and cheaper mm -hmm. with, 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 with each empire, right? right. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 34. You saw until a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Now he said, now see, 
When you go to war and you got you a stone giant, you don't be trying to smite nobody on their toes, do you? Right. You want to bust your brother in his head, don't you? Right. See? When you when you go in the back there, somebody bothering with you, walk by there and you pick up your alley apple giant and throw that bad <laughs> boy, you throw it in somebody's head, right? But this 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 image here, the stone was cut out of the mountains out here and smoked that image on his feet with them ten toes, right? right. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 35. Then were the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Hold on. One second. I can read that uh, last verse from the Verse 35. Then were the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind that carried them away, and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. You're talking about the Messiah, right? Right. The stone that smote him became a great mountain and filled the whole earth, right? Right. Okay. Who is it going to smite this, this beast? You. Right. You. Isaiah said, call the elders, gather the women and the children, let the priests, the ministers of God, weep between the porch and the altar and say what? Save your people, O God. Amen. So for why should the uh, 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 heathen bear rule over them? And Yahweh said, fear not. I'm going to give you corn. I'm going to give you wine. Don't you even worry about that. Mm. Right. So Judah is going to be in Jerusalem at this time, right? Amen. Go ahead, bro. Huh? That's what he said. Yeah, the stone is the Messiah, but see, the Messiah is going to come in. Judah is going to attack the city of Zion. The Messiah is going to come in and destroy this whole image. He's going to smack the beast on his feet. So it's, that's what I'm talking about the Messiah right there. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 36. This is the dream, and we will tell its interpretation before the king. Mm -hmm. You, O king, are a king of kings. For the Elohim of heaven have given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven have he given into your hand, and have made you ruler over them all. You are this head. The Babylonian Empire, 6060 BC, the Marabs, the Shemites, they was this head of gold, right? Mm -hmm. Brothers don't know this. So brothers walk around and say, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You're going to read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 39. And after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall be ruled over all the earth. So the Medes and the Persian came in in the second empire, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Greeks came in in the third empire, but Alexander the Great, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse, when well, that's another thing they don't understand why the Gentiles or the Europeans are bearing rule of all earth, right? They've been a party to it, right? They had a time. Of course. That's what the Muslims. The rulers of the earth had a time span to rule the earth. And they don't understand that, bro. See? When they tried in 625 BC, uh, uh, it didn't work. Right? right? When they tried again in the 13th century, it didn't work. They fought that war all over to Each time, the Europeans turned that war at Constantinople, Istanbul, right? Mm -hmm. And then, man, them Christians got together and went on crusade. Them Christians didn't wait for them to attack no more. Them Christians went on the attack, Jack. Right? Sure. And they've been attacking ever since. Yes, They're over there in, 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 in Iraq, attacking right now. Right. Okay. Right. Wait till they come up like a lion from the swelling of the jaw and trying to attack them all, trying to attack Jerusalem and see what happens. Mm -hmm. This bad boy, he's going to slide off into the Atlantic mm -hmm. and the Pacific and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it, brother. <coughs> Verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron break in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Mm -hmm. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. 
But thou shalt be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as you saw the iron mixed with my right. flesh. Right, the kingdom been divided ever since Rome fell in 476 A.D., right? There's been ten, nine kings so far that has come up to try to revive that and hold the Roman Empire, right? The beast is in the process of being healed right now. And it's going to be healed in, in our lifetime. Amen. And y'all ain't going to be no old folks when they get healed either. The ones they already old. <laughs> Read, <laughs> yes, sir. Verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were parted by and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Mm -hmm. And whereas you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. Right. Even as right. iron is not mixed with clay. Right. They're going to have wars and wars and more wars, right? Go ahead and read, brother. So we're talking about other ethnic groups against one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 44. And in the days of these kings... In the days of these ten kings. The ten kings that come out of them, them ten toes, right? right. In the days of, of these ten kings... Go ahead and read. Shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Amen. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. This is going to be set up on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. But the Christians said, no, we're going on the Mm -hmm. <coughs> Verse 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great Elohim have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation of it sure. Mm -hmm. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odor unto him. <coughs> the king had <laughs> <laughs> to bro. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your Elohim is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Mm -hmm. Seeing you could reveal this secret. Mm -hmm. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole prince of Babylon, province, I'm sorry, of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Okay, my brother, uh, uh, go ahead, please. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Okay, okay, my brother, let's go into chapter mm -hmm. 4. Well, I'm going to ask you something, too. You know, I was thinking about Joseph in Egypt and this brother here. Wherever our people have been, we've always been in that political realm, right? Sure. Ruling right in that political area where we were captains. Like today, we got a lot of brothers in, you know, politics. Mm -hmm. sure. That's all. Right. Sure. They can always be up there with the work and show with the folks that money. All right. Well, Jake's going to always rub shoulders with power, brother. That's where, you get your, that's where they get their bread from. Them silk suits and foot joy shoes and all that stuff. Buy them, them uh, severe STSs and L dogs and so forth. Right? Fly around in planes and get blown up in the sky. Right? Like Brown. Go ahead and read them. Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all the people, unto all people, nation and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high Elohim had wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream to them, but they did not make known unto me its interpretation. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, 
and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And to him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and no secret troubleth you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation of it. Right, he's going to tell Daniel, yeah, you got God's plural in you. Uh, you got a whole, you got the spirit of the, all the holy gods in you. Right. See, this, this dude here, Nebuchadnezzar, you don't understand what the deal is yet. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height of it was great. The tree grew and was strong, and its height reached unto heaven and the sight of it to the end of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Its leaves were fair, and its fruit much, and in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shouted on it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in its bowls, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves, and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field. Mm -hmm. And let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Mm -hmm. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. And let seven times pass over him, right? Let seven times to pass over him. Now this happened to Nebuchadnezzar, but this is also going off into another thing. It's going off into the times giving the Europeans to rule. This is why he told them, say, this dream is to your enemies. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the words of the Holy One to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will, and set up over it the bases of men. The bases of men, right? Check out your president. Yeah, all of them, check yeah. them all out. They had folks who walk around with hard wigs, white wigs on the head full of powder, like a bunch of sissies. Right. <laughs> Wearing them niggas and everything. What they got, Benjamin Franklin out there, man, with his with his wearing them tights and, and snuffing all that cocaine and so forth and wearing them tights and everything right all jacked up on his butt talking about strike the lightning, lightning strike the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> Verse 18. <laughs> this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation of it. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was a stone for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate you. The dream is to them that hate you. See? The dream is to them that hate you, right? Who was it that came in and took over from there? The Europeans, wasn't it? And the interpretation of it to your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew ever strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight of it to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and its fruit much, and in it was meat for all, of the which the beast of the field dwelt, and of the fun, whose branches the fowls of the heavens had their habitation. It is you, O king, that are grown and become strong. For your greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and said, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field to seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is a, come upon my lord, the king. 
that they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you to eat grass like oxen, and they shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree, leave the stump of the tree roots, your kingdom shall be sure unto you after you shall have known that the heavens do rule. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto you, and break off your sins by righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if there may be a lengthening of your tranquility. Mm -hmm. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Mm -hmm. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you to eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that Yahweh ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was dri driven from men, and did eat grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair was grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. At the, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I bless Yahweh, and I praise and honor him who liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and my brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, who all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to obey. Amen. Yes, sir. First chapter 5. Mm -hmm. When he said the dream be to them that hate you, what did he say if only the dream was about your enemies and not you? Well, the way I the way I understand that is that when he said the dream be to them that hate you, his uh, uh, he didn't hate himself and his his counselors and so forth didn't hate him, so it had to be the people that was uh, gonna come upon him and take the land from him. Uh, they was going to hate him because they, the people that was going to take the land from him was going to lose the land for 2,500 to years. I, I understand that. I just made that specific dream about the tree. So. Well, the tree was about specifically about him. That was right. specifically about him because all that came up on uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But when it went off into the seven times that was going to come up on him, that had to deal with, uh, that part of it had to deal with to them that hate him. And those, right, right, see, uh, that, <coughs> that, that first part of it had to do only with Nebuchadnezzar because that only happened to him. Well, you see how the Lord hyped those kings up? You know, they get to get the stomping around in their vanity and while they're in the height of their vanity, the Lord just cut them right on, break them down to the lowest common denominator. Brother, wait till you see when Yahweh begin the angel of the Lord beginning to hack some of us up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to see this. You won't see. I might be the first one. If you don't, see. if you don't die, if you don't die between the time that we get out there in that wilderness, you're gonna see it. Amen. But 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 look at this also. Once we get out there in that wilderness, brother, it's gonna to have to raise up. Uh, uh, it's gonna be a very charismatic uh, ruler that's gonna to have to come to, uh, 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 among us in order for us to follow him into Jerusalem. Because you know, all of us, man, it's gonna be about 20 million of us out there. You know we ain't gonna follow nobody. King David. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be gonna have to set something up, brother, in the way we gonna have to have a very charismatic brother doing it. Because all these brothers, every man, one of the people keep talking about, man, all I wanna see is Israel to come together. 
Israel they ain't gonna come together till the Messiah show up. Divine intervention. Right. right. Just before the Messiah come up, Israel, uh, Judah's gonna come together. But as far as Israel is concerned, Israel ain't gonna come together with nobody because all Israel think they're gods anyway. Every man like like you like. Hmm. People walk around to me, I ain't gonna be under no man. Everybody's under some man. Exactly. Humility is the key. I know. Go ahead and read, brother. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and the silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wife and his concubines might drink from them. Mm -hmm. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of Elohim, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Mm -hmm. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and broke over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that broke. Can you imagine that? Uh -huh. Looking up and seeing part of the hand and some faint and the finger right on the wall. <laughs> on the glass of the wall. Can you imagine that boy? Look at that make that make you jump out your seat. Yeah, exactly. yeah boy, I remember the first time I saw something that almost jumped up out of the building, man. Mm. Yes, sir, man. Scared me to death. Sitting there reading and looked up at the dude was sitting across from me, man, scared me to death. Mm. Mm. You saw your reflection? Wasn't no mirror there. <laughs> I was sitting at the kitchen table with no mirror there, bro. Go ahead and read, man. I had another brother came up to the house, man. The brother saw something in the house. He got out of there and he never did come back no more. He told me, man, ain't going to your house no more. Just stop walking around in your house. Right? That's to protect me from you niggas. <laughs> Verse 6. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees spoke one against another. Right. Uh, the king cried aloud to bring in his astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Bring them in! Bring them on in here! Wait. <laughs> yeah, brother. Go ahead and read. Oh, Esther Rose and all them old spirits. Yeah, yeah, bring them in. Yeah, I know. I know. She did, right. eh, brother? Right. right. She couldn't see that girl. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she having a good time now. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me its interpretation shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Mm. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation of it. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his laws were a stone. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance be changed. There is a man in your kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of your fathers, your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, I say, your father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Mm -hmm. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolvings of dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Are you that Daniel who are of the children of the captivity of Yehuda, whom the king, my father, brought out, brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of you that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation of it, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can make interpretation and dissolve doubts. 
Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me the interpretation of it, you shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said unto the king, Let your gifts be to yourself and give your rewards to another. Let your gifts be to yourself. Amen. Amen. See, we wait. See, and when Christ's man's time comes, them folks be passed out, them bonuses be the right there, though. <laughs> Custom. <laughs> Boy, that's so much tough, eh? Yeah, I know. Don't kill that good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, brother? I never thought of it on that term. Now, here we are. We practice Judaism, right? And we got laws, but now if the Gentiles give us money, they're actually giving us that money for the purpose of serving their gods, right? You're going to buy it either way then, right? You don't say you can get things like this. Uh-huh. I ain't never thought of that. You're going to buy it. You're going to buy it. You're going to buy it. Right. Right. Keep living. Never thought about it. Never Keep thought about it, bro. Keep living. No, thank you. Never said. Like I tell brothers when they come to us, hey, you know, my understanding is us and just keep sitting right there in that chair. But my type company don't give up on it. Sure you don't. Go on and read it, bro. Yeah. Mm. Brother, okay, uh, 18, mm -hmm. verse 18. Mm -hmm. O thy king, the most high Elohim gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nation, and languages tremble and fear before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he set down, and whom he would, he put up. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that Yahweh ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Amen. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but have lifted up yourself against the Adonai of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before you, you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the Elohim in, in whose hand are your in whose hand your breath is, and in whose all your ways have been glorified. Amen. Then was part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Upharsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, Elohim have numbered your kingdom and finished it. Mm. Tekel, you are weighed in the balances and are found wanting. You weighed in the balance. Mm. Find what you say. Not only your kingdom taken, you've been weighed in the balance, and you ain't did right here. You ain't did right yourself, right? Go ahead, bro. Verse 28. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Russians and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Russian, took the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Okay, uh, I'm going uh, to stop right there. And uh, next week what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll pick up, uh, we'll pick this up at, uh, at chapter 7. And verse 1, and we'll go ahead. I'm quite sure that some of y'all have already been prepped uh, for this piece. So when I go into this piece, y'all will think I'm talking about a bunch of junk. You should have had these things already. So uh, next week, we'll pick that up again in 7 and uh, verse 1. And may y'all have a reading to the blessing of the Lord of this word. Do we have any announcements?